So now moving on to part C, we want to find the expected value of the energy levels. So that means we need to evaluate the expected value of the Hamiltonian. And so that means we need to evaluate this integral. So we take the integral of the conjugate of the wave function, and then we slip in the Hamiltonian, and then we apply the Hamiltonian to the wave function, and then dx. So this is the integral that we need to evaluate. So before I move on with this, I'm going to change this expression up a bit. So instead of xi x t, I'm going to use xi x 0 instead. And the reason I can do this is because uh, the nature of the Hamiltonian, the expected value, uh, doesn't change as time goes on. So I could do this calculation for whatever values of t, and it will give me the same answer. So of course I'm going to choose uh, xi x 0 instead of xi x t for this formula, because xi x 0 is a lot easier to work with compared to xi x t, so, because you don't need to deal with all the t terms. And uh, no matter what I choose, I can use xi x 0, I can use xi x t, both of them would give me the same answer. So that is why I'm going to choose to deal with xi x 0 instead, because it's a lot easier. So now this is the integral that we're going to, to focus on. And then we know that xi 0, which is just the initial wave function, in this question, it's given by this expression. And then this expression applies for when x is between 0 and a. When x is, uh, is outside of this uh, region over here, it's going to be equal to 0. So that means our integral is actually going to go from 0 to a instead. So outside of this region, uh, both of these terms will be equal to 0. So your integral is just going to be equal to 0. So we only need to focus on the region from 0 to a. And then the initial wave function, we can just copy this down. So sine pi x over a. So there's still the conjugate sign up here, but this is there are no imaginary terms here, so I, I, it doesn't really affect the term. So I, I'll just omit writing out the conjugate. So, and we have the Hamiltonian operator, and this will be applied to the initial wave function, and dx. And for the Hamiltonian operator, this is going to be given by this expression. So dx squared. And then we actually also have a term for the potential. But then recall that since now we're dealing with an infinite square well with a width of 2a, and then now we're only dealing with the region from 0 to positive a. And so we're actually just integrating along this region over here. And within this region, the potential is just equal to 0. So I can just omit this. So this, is, this term is going to be our Hamiltonian. So now the next thing we need to do is that all you have to do is to apply this double derivative along with these constants. Uh, you just apply this operator to this function here. And then uh, after that, you will just multiply the two terms together. And then you take the integral. And then you will get your expected value. But uh, instead of evaluating this uh, entire expression explicitly, there is actually another scenario we can analyze. And then by analyzing that alternate scenario, we can actually evaluate this integral without having to do any actual math ourselves. So before I, so I'm going to put off evaluating this integral, and then I'm going to divert your attention to another setup. So now let's focus on the setup for the infinite square well, this time with a width of positive a. And then let's assume that now we are dealing with an in initial wave function that is equal to this term. So pi x over a. So it's the same exact initial wave function. So this is going to be for the region when x is between 0 and a. And then note that since now we're dealing with a infinite square well with a width of positive a, this is actually just the first stationary state for this potential over here. And in this case, if I wanted to find the expected value of the Hamiltonian, you will see that you're going to get the same exact integral as uh, as we uh, uh, the same exact integral as this one over here, the one that we want to evaluate. So I'm just going to write this out again. So if you're dealing with this setup with such a initial wave function, if you want to find the expected value of the Hamiltonian, you will see that you're, you're going to actually get the same exact integral. And then note that since we're dealing with a, a particle that has a wave function that is equal to the first stationary state within the infinite square well with the width of a, we know that no matter how many times we measure the energy level of this system over here, we're always going to get back the first energy level. And this is going to be the first energy level for this formula, so a squared. So before, uh, in the other setup where we, we're dealing with a well, well with a width of 2a, uh, this term would be equal to 2a squared. 
but now we're going to oh, now we're dealing with a completely different setup now the well only has a width of positive a so that's why down here we don't have 2a squared but we so we only have a squared and then for the first energy level this n is going to be equal to 1 so I can just take this away so this is going to be the energy level so now for this setup no matter how many times you measure the energy levels uh, for this setup for this particle with such a wave function you're always going to get back this energy level so that means the expected value of the energy levels the expected value of the Hamiltonian is just going to be equal to pi squared h bar squared divided by 2 m a squared because you know, the expected value is just equal to this, the value that you're bound to get over and over again and so that is why we know that this integral over here will actually be evaluated to this expression that you see and so that means going back to this integral over here which is what we're actually interested in we know that since this integral is exactly the same as this one and we know that this integral will be evaluated to this value over here so we know that in our case our answer is just going to be pi square h bar square divided by 2 m a square so this is going to be the expected value and of course you can try this out yourself you can instead of using this argument over here you can actually just apply the Hamiltonian to this expression and then evaluate it once and you will see that you will get the exact same answer so actually we can just try it out as well so uh, we have let's pull the square root of 2 over a's to the outside first and then we have a sine pi x over a and then we're going to take the second derivative of this term and also don't forget the constants so taking the second derivative of the sine function we're going to get a negative sine and then we all due to the chain rule we're also going to have a pi over a square on the outside because there's a pi over a attached to the x and then differentiating sine twice you get sine cosine and cosine becomes negative sine so you get negative sine pi over a x dx and of course these negative signs they cancel out so now I can just uh, group up all the constants to the outside h bar squared 2m and then we also have a pi square a square and then we have this expression inside the integral sine square pi over a x dx so evaluating this is easy enough we just use the double angle formula so sine square will become something like this so instead of writing sine square I'm going to write 1 minus cosine 2 pi over a x divided by 2 dx so I'm just using this formula over here and so evaluating this so we need to integrate 1 from 0 to a which just gives us a over 2 so let me just write all this out first so that will give me a over 2 and integrating this cosine term will just give us a sine and then in the end when we substitute in a you get a sine 2 pi which is equal to 0 and then when you substitute 0 you get a sine 0 which is also 0 so in the end everything is just 0 so this term can be ignored so this entire integral is just going to be equal to a over 2 which uh, nicely cancels out with these terms over here so combining these two terms you see that you get pi square h bar square divided by 2 m a square which is exactly what we would expect you see that this is exactly the same as this so this is the answer